where I've been. I'm good. We're gonna stand and we'll stop it. As long as it's not you know. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. I guess stop it then. Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikava Yemu Yatiat Surayaha Tene Brahma Hudaya Adikava Yemu Tantuja Suraya Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Chisago Misha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Chisago Misha Damna Srina Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Srina Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. O all pervading personality of Godhead. For my respectful obeisances unto you. For my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He's directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. Directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he's independent because there's no other cause beyond him. And he's independent because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporary manifested by the reactions of the three modes. of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitrovo Cha. Dharma Projita Kaitrovo Cha. Paramo Nimatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulan. Shivadam Tapo Trayon Mulan. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Parir Ishwaraha. Kimva Parir Ishwaraha. 
Sadiorhidi Avurudyate Tra. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from the illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sugadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidiantak Stoa Badrani Vidunati Shrihitvatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from, from, from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta Praesu Bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo Kama loba dayas chaye Chaitere tarinavidam Stitvam satve prasidati by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavad bhakti yoga daha Bhagavad Tattva Vigyana Mukta Sangha Sijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the, ran the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Bidyate hridaya grantis Chidyante sarva samsaya Shiyante chasya karmani 
Krista Evat Manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come to the stage of Asamsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 14, Text Number 9. Yasman na sampadu rajyam Dara prana kulam praja Asan sapatna vijayo Lokascha yad anugrahat Translation, from him only, all our kingly opulence, good wives, lives, progeny, control over our subjects, victory over our enemies, and future accommodations in higher planets have become possible. All this is due to his causeless mercy upon us. Purport, by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Material prosperity consists of a good wife, good home, sufficient land, good children, aristocratic family relations, victory over competitors, and, by pious work, attainment of accommodations in higher celestial planets for better facilities of material amenities. These facilities are earned not only by one's hard manual labor, or by unfair means, but by the mercy of the Supreme Lord. Prosperity earned by one's personal endeavor also depends on the mercy of the Lord. Personal labor must be there in addition to the Lord's benediction. But without the Lord's benediction, no one is successful simply by personal labor. The modernized man of Kali Yuga believes in personal endeavor and denies the benediction of the Supreme Lord. Even a great sannyasi of India delivered speeches in Chicago protesting the benedictions of the Supreme Lord. So that's Vivekananda. But as far as Vedic Shastras are concerned, as we find in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam, the ultimate sanction for all success rests in the hands of the Supreme Lord. Maharaj Yudhisthira admits this truth in his personal success. And, be, and it behooves one to follow in the footsteps of the great king and devotee of the Lord to make life a full success. If one could achieve success without the sanction of the Lord, then no medical practitioner would fail to cure a patient. Despite the most advanced treatment of a suffering patient by the most up-to-date medical practitioner, there is death. And even in the most hopeless case, without medical treatment, a patient is cured astonishingly. Therefore, the conclusion is that God's sanction is the immediate cause of all happenings, good or bad. Any successful man should feel grateful to the Lord for all he has achieved. Well, this is definitely a beautiful uh, statement by Srila Prabhupada. Any successful man should feel grateful to the Lord for all he has achieved. Unfortunately, people of demoniac nature don't do that. And it explains here in the 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita that... Asatyam apratistam te jagat ahur anishwaram aparas para sambutam kim anyat kama hai to come. They say, 
meaning the demons, that this world is unreal. It has no foundation, no God in control. They say it is produced of sex desire that has no cause other than lust. <laughs> so, the Prabhupada writes, the demonic conclude that the world is phantasmagoria. In other words, it's, it's uh, an illusion. There is no cause and effect, no controller, no purpose. Everything is unreal. They say that this cosmic manifestation arises due to chance material actions and reactions. They do not think that the world was created by God for a certain purpose. They have their own theory that the world has come about in its own way and there is no reason to believe that there is a God behind it. For them, there is no difference between spirit and matter. And they do not accept the Supreme Spirit. Everything is matter only. And the whole cosmos is supposed to be a mass of ignorance. According to them, everything is void. And whatever manifestation exists is due to our ignorance in perception. They take it for granted that all manifestation and diversity is a display of ignorance, just as in a dream we may create so many things which actually have no existence. Then, when we are awake, we see that everything is simply a dream. But factually, although the demons say that life is a dream, they are very expert in enjoying this dream. And so, instead of acquiring knowledge, they become more and more implicated in their dreamland. They conclude that a child is simply the result of sexual intercourse between man and woman. This world is born without any soul. For them, it is only a combination of matter that has produced the living entities, and there's no question of the existence of the soul. As many living creatures come out from the perspiration and from a dead body without any cause, the whole living world has come out of the material combinations of the cosmic manifestation. Therefore, material nature is the cause of this manifestation, and there's no other cause. They do not believe in the words of Krishna, in Bhagavad Gita, Maya Dakshina Pakriti, Suryate Satcharacharam. Under my direction, the whole material world is moving. In other words, among the demons, there is no perfect knowledge of the creation of the world. Every one of them has some particular theory of his own. According to them, one interpretation of the scriptures is as good as another, for they do not believe in a standard understanding of the scriptural injunctions. So that's really good summary of the demons and uh, and there are all the different levels of demons uh, this is what Prabhupada is explaining here is the most uh, stalwart obstinate uh, disgusting demon and then there are different levels uh, there are demons that admit that there may be a god but they subordinate God to the laws of material nature, which they claim is are supreme. What are the laws of material nature? That uh, is a uh, that's another you know uh, source of speculation. However, in Krishna consciousness, there is no speculation because we rely on scriptural authority. Therefore. There are explicit laws of nature. For example, something that is born is destined to die. That's in Bhagavad Gita, second chapter. And everything goes through six stages. Birth and uh, growth and staying or existence and then giving off byproducts children, and whatever, and then dwindling and death. So it doesn't matter what it is. If, if it's something that's born, it can be a plant, it can be a, uh, a fish, it can be a bird, it can be an insect, it can be a reptile, it can be a uh, mammal, or it can be a human being. They all go through these six stages. And ultimately, is birth, old age, disease, and death. So uh, these things are true. 
no one can deny them. And uh, when we understand these things, that we see that everything is limited in the material world. And there are certain uh, undeniable, let's say, regular occurrences, like the sun is rising, and then because it's, it, does, it happens in a specific way, people can predict when the sun will rise, when it will set. You go on the in internet and it says, today it will rise at this time, and it will set at this time. Now, those are... Everything I just stated are laws of nature. And they're not relative laws. They're, they're, uh, they are precise uh, laws that, are, that we see happening every day. And it's been going on since the beginning of time, and it'll continue until the end of time. So therefore, we don't have to guess uh, about the laws of nature. Uh, but we can understand that whoever has made these laws cannot, it can, could not happen by accident or by some fortuitous combination of matter. It has to be an intellect behind it. Why? Because they're laws, and they've been going on since the beginning of time, and they'll continue until the end of time. So n that nothing could, could happen by accident. That is, that is so precise. So, this is evident. Anyone who has common sense can see this. The only people who don't have common sense are philosophers and scientists. Now, that might be a shocking statement, but a scientist who's observing all these, uh, let's say, recurring things in, 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 in predictable ways, in the end, after all their scientific research, they say there's no God. It's happening. It happened by accident. And they're making up crazy theories of how it happened by accident, by some explosion uh, and a Big Bang and this and that. They're making, they, they, and their theories are always changing. So uh, all this is part of the demonic mind, mindset that uh, rejects the existence of a supreme personality of Godhead. However, there are different degrees of that. And what we just read now, 16th chapter, verse 8, is the most uh, extreme degree. But there are lesser degrees. There are people who claim they believe in God, but yet uh, they speculate and make up philosophies for government, philosophies for life, philosophies for social... Uh, organization and so forth and uh, mislead people and it leads eventually to a loss of faith in God although they claim that they believe in God and they may have some belief in God but it's uh, unfortunately uh, contaminated by speculative ideas that are uh, fertile uh, productions of a uh, over uh, of a uh, mind on steroids, as they say, they're coming up with ideas all the time, and then uh, that are speculative, and then because they're good at English or good in their language, and they they uh, uh, make long studies, and and they've learned uh, what's called the uh, academic gobbledygook, they're able to convince people. Uh, uh, who uh, accept their speculations as the truth. Okay, so therefore, here it says, the ultimate sanction for all success rests in the hands of the Supreme Lord. Maharaj Yudhisthira admits this truth in his personal success, and it behooves one, in other words, it's, one should feel uh, imperatively to follow in the footsteps of a great king and devotee of the Lord to make life a full success. Well, that is recommended highly in the Bhagavad Gita by Krishna and also in the Srimad Bhagavatam where it says, Mahajana Yena Gita Sapanta. 
In Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna says that whatever a great man does, common men follow. And whatever standards he establishes become the standards of society. So this is uh, a common thing. There, some people say, oh, this person is so successful. How did he become successful? And they ask that person, and he says, well, I smoke one cigar every day, and I drink a tumbler of uh, whiskey, and, uh, and that's my success. <laughs> you know, and then someone might live to be 102, and they say, what is your secret? And they say, well, I, I, after uh, I was uh, 82 years old, I started eating only one egg a day. You know, so then people think, oh, well, I should start eating one egg a day, right? Or I should drink a little tumbler of whiskey. So this is all nonsense, but people like nonsense. They like to hear nonsensical things, and they uh, thrive on it, right? But uh, devotees avoid such speculative, nonsensical things and stay steady in their determination to follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans, that is, sapramanam kurate lokostad anavartate. Whatever standards they establish become the standards of society, right? So, uh, therefore, we should follow Maharaj Yudhisthira. That's the whole point of this purport. Uh, any successful man should feel grateful to the Lord for all he has achieved. So the key word here is grateful, uh, gratitude, uh, when we recognize who is our greatest benefactor. The greatest benefactor is the Lord. He's given us the ability to free ourselves from the cycle of birth and death. And as we read a couple of days ago, that ability should be used in devotional service. Devotional service, Prabhupada said, is the solution to all the problems of life. Devotional service is the solution to all the problems of life. If you have some problems, and every day there's a new problem. Just like yesterday, I was talking to one person, and they looked very, very disturbed. I said, what's the matter? I said, my dog died. Okay, I said, well... Uh, you can get another dog. They, they felt really uh, insulted by that. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Uh, anyway, uh, then I said, "Well, so I, why don't you?" I said, well, "Why don't you get a? Uh, uh, pretty soon we're going to have some young baby goats. Why don't you get a goat?" I said, "The goat stool is like a little pellet, like that. It's it's hard and it's, you know it doesn't smell." And, and uh, and then uh, if you get a female goat, it can give you milk, and uh, and they're very gentle and they're very sweet. And well, none of that seemed to placate the person's uh, distress because of their attachment to the dog that died. So there's problems. It's going to be problems every day in people's lives. It can be health. It can be death of loved ones. It can be financial problems. It can be political problems. It can be war, it can be uh, the weather, whatever. Uh, so, Prabhupada's point is that all the problems of life can be resolved and one can have a peaceful, happy life by Krishna consciousness, by devotional service. So devotional service is the solution to all problems. But who will accept that? That's the point. Most people reject that and because they reject that they go on suffering unnecessarily <clears throat> and also now today we have another point that's very important the conclusion is that god's sanction is the immediate cause for all happenings good or bad any successful man should feel grateful to the lord for all he has achieved so uh, Nothing can happen without the sanction of God. Not, a, not even a blade of grass moves without the sanction of God. If we accept that, then whether we are experiencing good or bad results from our activities, we should understand that there's some plan that the Lord has. And we should be patient 
And the only way to remain patient and steady is through practicing devotional service on a, every day as one's culture. Prabhupada says that Krishna consciousness is a culture. He doesn't call it a religion. He calls it a culture. And culture is the way people do things. So, therefore, this waking up early, bathing, putting on clean clothes, coming to the temple for Mangalarti and Tulsiarti, Guru Puja, and hearing the class, and discuss, discussion takes place in the class, and then uh, greeting the deities, and then taking prasadam. This is the way we do things. This is our culture, the culture of Krishna consciousness. And also, not being disturbed by success or failure. One continues in that steadiness of devotional service. That is the only way to live life and not become a victim of illusion and illusory concepts. So we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Well, it's pretty simple. It's showing gratitude. In other words, the fact that we somehow or other came in contact with Srila Prabhupada and were introduced to this Krishna consciousness movement and this way of life, this culture of Krishna consciousness, we should be extremely grateful for that because um, it's a possibility of having a peaceful and happy life. And when we say peaceful, it doesn't mean nothing bad happens around us or to us. It just means that we're not disturbed by it because we remain steady in devotional service. If you're not steady in devotional service, then you get disturbed. But peaceful does not mean nothing bad is going to happen. It just means that you're not affected by it. Your devotional service is not affected by it. You go on steadily in devotional service. And we should be very grateful to Prabhupada. And, and also, we uh, are, are equal to all people. We no longer see in terms of ethnicity. We no longer see in terms of race or uh, financial position or we see the soul. So this is called a primary quality. There's a big argument in, in philosophy about what are primary qualities and what are secondary qualities. And so many speculations about it. But we know what the primary quality is. Primary quality is the eternal soul's relationship with the supreme eternal personality of Godhead. That's the prime, primal quality of, of everything. So if we see like that, and that's, that's the way we're, t we're taught to see by reading Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, then we are no longer disturbed by the ups and downs of the material world. If we don't see that primary, primal quality or prime quality of, of things, then we begin to see in terms of the body and bodily relationships and so forth, and we get affected by them. Just like this lady, yes, it was affected, like seriously affected by the loss of a dog, right? Because she developed, but there's no idea of you know, maybe the dog has a soul. Maybe, maybe it's a good thing it died. It can go on to a, a higher form of life, right? But no, nothing like that. They're just, they're just lamenting because of the bodily attachment to the dog and and not seeing the soul, not understanding the existence of the soul. So we have to thank Prabhupada every day for what he's given us. This is unbelievable. He's given us a chance to free ourselves from the cycle of birth and death. If he didn't come and he didn't spend so much time writing these books and setting up an organization called ISKCON and then people building temples. He built temples and then other people are building temples so that people can come and hear this. 
That's the whole reason why we have the temple. It's a place where you can hear this Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam on a daily basis and become very introspective about what, how you want to live your life and what values you hold to be, uh, let's say, the, the foundation of the way you live. Best way to be grateful is to follow your guru's instructions, right? Follow your guru's instructions. And what, what, are, what are your guru's instructions? Is to surrender to Krishna through regulated life of devotional service, right? So you're doing regulated things every day based on devotional service, right? You're worshiping your deity, you're coming to the morning program, you taking part in the artis, you're chanting your rounds. So we should be grateful for all these things that have been given to us. Otherwise, we would have never figured this out on our own. Impossible. We would have been diverted into so many other things, politics and money-making and sense gratification. We wouldn't have time for this. We wouldn't even see the importance of it. It's only because of the... Uh, words of a pure devotee that we've ended up at this stage in our life where we're practicing this culture and we should be very grateful for it by following it strictly. That's the way you show your gratefulness. Haribo. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, glorious Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So yesterday the question was is